um, I hope you guys are having a great week. I know this video is coming out to you guys a little bit later um, than I had hoped. Uh, I had slight technical difficulties with saving the last one. Um, so I wanted to do a couple videos and get them out to you guys. Um, quick reminder that on Wednesday at 2 o'clock, we do have a Google Meet. Um, we have them on Monday, Wednesday, Fridays at 2. Um, and I'll repost those links for everyone to see. Um, perfect. So I wanted to go over on the PowerPoint. This is in Schoology for you guys to review. But I did want to go over it in a little bit of detail together. Um, we are going to continue our look at the Constitution. Last week, we were looking at the different compromises that were made to create the Constitution. Um, and this week, we're going to move forward in looking at um, the different ways that the Constitution has been split. Um, so the Constitution itself had created three branches of government. Um, the legislative branch, which is job is to make the laws, the executive branch, which is job is to enforce the laws, and the judicial branch, whose job it is to interpret or decide um, what the meaning of the written law is. So you can see, right, the White House, the executive branch is the president, for the legislative branch, we have our Congress, the House of Representatives, and the Senate. And then for the judicial branch, uh, the most important body is our Supreme Court. And so all of these are separate but equally important branches, parts of the government. Okay, so first one looking at is the legislative branch. Um, once again, their job is to make and pass laws. The legislative branch is split into two groups. There is the Senate here, and then the House of Representatives. The Senate is based on two people are allowed in the Senate per state. So equal representation in the Senate. The House of Representatives, the number of people in there is based on how many people live in your state. So it's based on population. This was what came out of the Great Compromise. Um, so the combined houses, the House of Representatives and the Senate, is known as Congress. So there's a bunch of different terms for it. And we'll make sure to um, kind of keep on looking at the different ways. The executive branch. These guys are in charge of making sure the law is put into practice and enforced. So <clears throat> the legislative branch will make a law and pass it. And the executive branch, which is headed by the president, is in charge of making sure that it is being followed. Um, the president's powers in the Constitution are kind of vague and broad. So today, the president has a lot more powers than what were stated in the Constitution. Um, and the power of the president has grown over the years. Oops, that's what we're looking for. Lastly, the judicial branch, they are in charge of interpreting the laws, and they are the ones um, who will look at a case, see what the law says, and then make a decision. So this includes all of the court systems, um, the highest one being the Supreme Court, but even the state and local courts are a part of the judicial branch. Our Supreme Court um, has changed since this picture, um, but there are nine justices and they are the ones who s interpret the Constitution. So if they decide that something is unconstitutional, um, they make it illegal across the United States. So these guys are very important. Um, they are put in their positions for life and um, are elected by the president. Separation of powers, just know that each branch was meant and made to be separate from each other. They didn't want them fighting over the jobs, and each branch, because they were separate, they wanted to make sure each had power over the other. Much like rock, paper, scissors, each branch is going to have a way of controlling the other one. So here is our executive branch, this is our legislative branch, and here is the judicial, and each kind of shows the different 
ways that empowers.